Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. I've had some hints and some, I suppose you could call them, requests about this flipping merchandise thing. I don't want this taking over. It's an orchid channel, <laughs> not a clothes shop. <laughs> but it is an option that I've decided to take up. So um, what I'd like to do is, uh, on the website, um, there is a set of products. Um, about half of those products I can't use. They're called locked products and they involve a special type of upload and things. It's where you get um, stuff like, well, for example, a shower curtain. That's a huge object, yeah? And you have to upload a, a special way of actually allowing them to print it. Um, so I'm not going to get involved with any of that stuff. I'm only going to get involved with the stuff that I can do the design for relatively simply but I thought I'd just go over the list of things because they're not all on my um, store yet I've only done a few um, I mean I've done the tote bag some phone covers and, and the mug um, various options but what I'd like to say at the beginning is because it costs me nothing apart from a little bit of design time to put a new item in the store I'm happy to take requests so you can have something how you want it if you see what I mean you'll have to give me quite precise instructions obviously and I've got no way of um, doing a preview if you know what I mean um, I can't send you a basic idea before it goes in the store the design is part of the store and it either goes live or it gets scrapped. So I don't get many options. As I say, this is not in my full control. But um, yeah, I mean, you can, you can ask for a certain set of words on an object, a certain picture on an object, combinations, yeah, all those sort of things. So I could do requests. And if I end up putting an item on the store and nobody buys it, quite honestly, it's no big deal for me. Apart from the small amount of time it took to put it up there, if nobody buys that item, it doesn't really matter that much. Not really. Apart from the fact I don't want the store getting too cluttered. Um, I'm not sure there's a way of actually taking an item down once you put one up there. Anyway, that's for me to worry about, not for you. But I thought I'd go over the options that are available. Um, first of all, in the um, t-shirt line, there's a, a unisex stroke men's t-shirt. Now, this is a standard round neck t-shirt with short sleeves. And um, basically that, um, oh, first of all, let's go over sizes first. Once you get into the um, clothes, they have different sizes. And the range they've got is comfort, not available for everything, and that's a that's quite a slim fit, yeah. And then there's classic, which is just like a standard sort of shape, and then there's what they call slouchy. <laughs> I'm not going to elaborate on that, but we're going up in size here, so you can imagine what slouchy is. Really slopping around the house type size, I would or fit, I would say. <laughs> so that's the um, <clears throat> things they offer. Right, so back to the, the standard unisex men's t-shirt, that short-sleeved with a round neck. Um, and that one comes in the classic and the comfort size. Then there's a woman's t-shirt, yeah? And that one comes in a comfort size, a classic size, and a slouchy size in the round neck but it also comes in the classic size with a v-neck yeah so that's that's those two t-shirts um, there is also a long sleeve t-shirt obviously more expensive that comes in a classic size with the standard sort of round neck and then it comes in a woman's relaxed fit which has got a wider neck yeah so there's more neckline showing um, not so tight round the neck so that's the normal t-shirts. They also do tank tops, which in a lot of countries would be called a vest shape. You know, this is a totally sleeveless thing with sort of straps over the shoulder, tank top, vest, whatever you want to call it. 
and that comes in the um, classic size which is like the regular fit and then it comes in a, a woman's relaxed fit so that will be a looser fit and it also comes in a woman's fitted which is slim yeah so a tighter fit along those that's the uh, tank tops and then there are also long sleeve t-shirts and um, yeah so uh, uh, as red they also do hoodies and sweatshirts um, these these are not necessarily that cheap but hoodies and sweatshirts and they come in a classic size or fit pullover hoodie yeah and they also come in a classic crew neck um, sweatshirt that would be obviously um, so th th that's those and then obviously the things we've already covered we've got the two types of phone iPhone and Samsung um, you could design your own phone case if you want but they only do those two phones there's not a whole list it's just those two then there's obviously the tote bag which I've done a couple of and the mug so those are the items I can deal with um, but as I said you know you, you, you can sort of send me an email don't put it in the comments <laughs> so the, the email address is on all the video in all the video descriptions along with the link to the merchandise store that shows the ones I've done so far um, I'm keeping my prices to as low as I dare I suppose because with the exchange rates chopping and changing um, although I set my profit at a, sta a standard amount when I create a new item when the price actually goes live it's sometimes different to the price for the previous item of the same description and that's just an extreme exchange rate thing that's difficult for me to control um, so those are the things you can have and as I said, you, you can have a, send me an email with a, a good description of the sort of thing you want, like on a mug. Um, if you go back to my, you might have to do a bit of work here. If you go back to my, um, I did a video called The Big Cheat or A Big Cheat or something like that, which gave you the link to my orchid tag, which was basically me chatting away to a slideshow of all of the pictures of the orchids I've ever had those are the pictures you can choose from yeah you might have trouble describing which one it is because I didn't put titles up it was just a rolling picture but um, each picture is up there for quite a few seconds and you can always give me a time from that video for the picture you want um, they will they will be you know square or oblong I'm not messing about trying to turn pictures into circles and funny shapes and stuff um, but you can choose your own photo or photos you can have a mug with one photo on the front a different one on the back you can have one set of words on the front one set of words on the back same with the t-shirts yeah you, you, you can choose whether you want a logo or a picture or both and whether you want an expression your own it doesn't have to be one of mine <clears throat> and I'm thinking along the lines that um, you know we do have um, the holiday period coming up when it's traditional to do presents and things like that so I'm just sort of bearing that in mind if you see what I mean so I'll leave it at that for for the merchandise stuff as I said for goodness sake don't feel obliged to go and buy something although if you do go into designing your own and I go to the trouble of putting up putting it up there it would be appreciated if you do then go and buy it <laughs> Um, but do it via email you know say say what you want the item you want um, the items are in choices of colors I don't need to worry about that I'll do a base design you know on a color but when you order you choose the color but take care with text yeah and also color combinations you know you can choose a photo of a nice orchid that you like but if you choose like a t-shirt in a certain color the colors of the orchid might not go with the t-shirt <laughs> you get a color clash so think it through but you choose your colors anyway but be careful with um, choosing text for instance if you order a black t-shirt it's no good having black text on there is it because it ain't gonna show but you can choose your text color 
it's a limited palette I'll call it but most of the colors are available not lots of different shades of those colors and things but most of the colors are available including black and including white and various other things in between there's a couple of blues a couple of greens some oranges a red yellow a couple of yellows actually pinks so you know it's reasonable choice of colors for the actual text and some sort of description of what sort of font you'd like for your text? Do you want bold capitals? Um, you know, upright text? Do you want it sloping text? Do you want it swirly? Do you want a script style? Yeah? So, um, yeah. Um, I'll leave it with you and uh, that'll do. <coughs> As I said, I don't, I don't want to spend all my time mucking about. I'm not a clothes store. It's an orchid channel. And talking of which, I thought I'd just have a look around. There's a few things that are spiking and budding um, one of which was a little um, unexpected this large green thing right at the back here I'm not getting it out is my Tahitian dancer and that's got four new growths across the front of the plant and two of them have now got spikes coming the other two will follow so we're going to get some blooms on the two heat Tahitian dancer soon um, my Soto Annum buds are now starting to show many <laughs> that's that that is going to be a mass especially that little tangle there that particular growth has got six spikes on and three of them are all muddled up together that's just going to be a mass of color when that comes out and fragrance uh, that's all that's in bud over there i'm starting to get my taller stuff over here in preparation for doing the other grow light um, the uh, you're not going to be able to see that very well if i get this one down gently then we can look up there the two vander spikes are pushing on nicely you can see that one out round the back there that one had the closed peg treatment is now nicely arched over and the buds are forming and this one up here has got the closed pegs on to pull it down and keep it keep the buds away from that roof and the one i've got in my hand the little orange vander uh, ask a sender really um, although that's been changed that that but that spikes pushing on nicely that'd be a nice bright cluster of orange to come down the line get it back up there without whacking the other vander around uh, that was that where else did i see some buds oh we got some buds coming up here on this cat layer that will be silhouetted that's the little lemon drops crossed with something or other that looks like two four maybe five or six little blooms on there that's the bright yellow one. It either opens orange and fades to yellow or the other way around, I forget. But we'll find out soon. They're, they're coming along nicely. Um, there's nothing much going on down here. But there is one Mazda Valia with a bud on. You're not going to be able to see that in the dark very well. But the bud is raising itself. So I don't think it's going to blast. It's going to open. And in my notes, that just says... Um, Mazda Valia hybrid and I've still got pictures of quite a lot of Mazda Valia hybrids the plants have all gone except that one so I haven't got a clue which one that is but as soon as that opens I'll be able to identify it that's all that's going on there um, buds over here uh, I think there's some spikes coming on the twinkles up here I thought I saw some the other day if not, they'll be coming soon. Yeah, there's a spike here on that one. So the, uh, these two little twinkles are starting to push some buds. Um, over here, I don't think there's anything in this mass of green over here. Oh, yes, there is. I can see something up the back there. I haven't got a clue what it is. We've got buds here. That, I think, <laughs> I can't get at the plant. Um, oh, actually, that's my um, that's my, my Latoria. That's uh, Alexandre, I think. Yes. Yeah, so that that's one of my Latorias. One of the only ones that's doing okay at the moment. Um, oh, we've got a we've got a um, Tulumnia up here pushing a spike. Um, so that's a that's a new spike. I think that one's bloomed before. I don't know which one it is. No tag on it at the moment. Um, down here we've got uh, 
We've got some buds or a spike pushing up on this dendrobium and another one on this new growth. Now it just goes to show I've never had light burn on these types of dendrobiums. This is a phalaenopsis type but we certainly got it this year. I really will have to watch that shade netting next year. I thought I was doing the plants a favour leaving a layer off. <laughs> uh, no such luck and the trouble is if the light is only a bit too much rather than a lot too much all at once it takes a while for it to actually happen if you do a sudden dramatic change you know from a shady place to a almost full sun it can happen in an hour but it can happen over quite a long period of time as well so um, the two oldest growths on here have had quite quite a bit of light damage whereas the newer growths are okay you know and are spiking that's the white phalaenopsis type that one it was in bloom last winter uh, up here we've got my lalia anseps spikes are pushing on they're still not showing their buds but they start starting to flatten at the end which is um, a sign that the buds will then come out the side soon two of those on the same plant it's a, a catlia with a nice spike pushing up at the back there. And there are quite a few other sheaths with buds at the base that are not pushing up just yet. But there are, in fact, there's quite a few catlia buds to come down the line. Um, what else? We've got the um, Miltonia Queen Anne. Buds are just starting to form on that spike. Yeah, I broke that one. <laughs> I don't break spikes very often and I can imagine I get just as annoyed as everybody else <laughs> uh, yeah that's that was that um, not much else there's a possibility down here where was it I've got a feeling it might have blasted but this this is two Silogeny Morianas great big um, blooms well as Sologenes go and I was quite sure I saw a spike on one of those but I've got a feeling it might have blasted anyway if it does come we will see it yeah, I've got a feeling it blasted probably too much flipping light again um, that's that uh, uh, some some other um, oncidium types twinkles that I mounted pieces of they've got spikes on as well uh, one on that one, I've got a feeling that one, ha yeah, that one's got a little spike as well. So we've got, we've got quite a few twinkle types and um, similar coming along. Um, I don't think there's anything in spike over here, not yet. Um, obviously, I've got um, a lot of dendrobiums, and a lot of those are late winter early spring bloomers so I don't expect to see anything from them for some time and it's coming up to the point now where we're getting into the period of rest we've got a conflict of interest with those plants at the moment because it's not cold it's just dull so they've lost their light yeah they're not getting their bright days which in their natural environment a lot of those not all but a fair few are from deciduous forests and it will be coming into autumn now the leaves might be starting to fall letting more light in well they're not getting that at the moment we've just got dull wet days and we've got a whole sequence of them and at the moment there's no end in sight that's just going on and on and I suspect knowing this country that when this weather breaks and this whole sequence of low pressures moves away we're going to get a high pressure in with nice clear blue skies and it's going to get cold quite suddenly I suspect I heard that some parts of the states went from really really hot weather to below freezing and snow overnight <laughs> you know, the weather can change quite dramatically so uh, if you've got plants outside keep your eye on your weather forecast you don't want you uh, plants freezing and I mean this this when we get through the winter into spring there's a lot more nobilies in here than there have been in the past there's quite a few new plants that came in as gifts last year or one that I bought myself so there's quite a few more nobilies than there ever has been before I mean I was stuck with the spring dream of pollen and the um, 
prima donna. Well, that, those are still here. Um, in the case of the spring dreamer pollen, only just. <laughs> I, I split that plant and I, I kept the, the small bit. Um, the, the other bits went to other people, so the, you know, that was a giant plant at one point. And the prima donna, again, that was split down and I kept the smallest part. I mean, it's, great. it's growing okay. It's got new canes and there are some places on the older canes that haven't bloomed yet. So we will get prima donna blooms. We will get, you know, nobly blooms when we get there. Um, plus others, obviously. But, uh, yeah. I'll leave it at that then. As I say, there's, 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 there's some things to come. It's just a relatively quiet time for actual things in bloom at the moment. But we do have things to come. <coughs> Um, you know, there was an odd thing I saw yesterday. I thought, oh, that's a surprise. Uh, I can't remember what it was or where it was. And it's early in the day. Um, oh, I, I can't get that out. But I don't know whether I can... And I won't be able to get in close with this light. But this little um, maxillaria is actually in bloom at the moment. I'll see if I can get in there. You're not going to see much of that, it's actually it's just starting to go over. But that's one of those that I class as a perpetual bloomer, because the blooms just come and go when they feel like it. I've never managed to get a mass blooming on that one. I think the most blooms I've ever had is five, which is not many. I mean, I've seen those at shows that are just covered in red. You know, they look gorgeous. Um, oh, the BC Make A, um, that's got sheaths forming on the, on the new growth from this year. So um, I think I had two spikes last year. Um, it was a relatively new plant, and when it bloomed last time, it was unexpected. I, d I didn't expect it to bloom. Um, not because it's a young plant, but because it had, you know, it was acclimatizing, been repotted and all that sort of stuff. But we managed to get some blooms, lovely long-lasting long ones. That's the beauty of those. So um, those... I think that's a midwinter bloomer. Um, it's certainly not this time of year under normal circumstances. And um, I've seen people questioning. Um, that's my Encyclia cordigera, cordigera up there. I just I don't think I can get it out. But oh, and my um, what do you call it? Ivanagara apple blossom does have a, a sheath in its latest growth, so that. Yeah, I can just see signs of the buds forming, so that's going to bloom. But, yeah, my Cordigera up there, we nearly lost that totally. It was in totally the wrong media, staying wet and everything, and, and dumped its roots. When I repotted that, it virtually had none. Um, it's now got a massive root system and quite a few maturing new growths. And um, it is rumoured that if you want your latest growths to bloom... You need to give it a rest. Once those growths are mature, you need to withhold your water and your feed for a while, give it a bit of a rest. Um, I've never done that, but then I haven't seen blooms on mine for absolutely ages, but there was a good reason for that. The plant was dying. <laughs> you know, I, it, it, it got bad without me really noticing and not really understanding why. Once I got my head around the fact that that needs an open mix and needs to dry incredibly fast, away went the roots. And we now got a good root system and a nice healthy plant. Luckily, that was nearly gone. It was on its way out. <laughs> uh, this um, tatty looking cat there looks... Uh, might be a blind sheath, but there's, there's one there. But as I say, there are cat sheaths all over the place um, coming and... Uh, They'll be coming soon. There's another little one tucked in there. Let me just tuck that leaf back in there. Yeah, there's buds at the bottom of that one as well. So, so we've got cat on. Oh, there's another big sheath up the back there towards the glass. It's got a shadow in the base as well. So, uh, yeah, we, we, there's a fair bit to come, just not a lot at the moment. And um, I did notice when I was watering, I've got a few plants that appear to have stalled. Um, a couple of this cattleya here, don't ask me what it is because I've forgotten, but this one actually bloomed, did okay, and that was a long time ago, and it still hasn't started its next growth yet. And that's having a very long rest, if you can call it that. 
presume it's a rest. Yeah. And something that's probably going to bloom that never gets filmed is this um, epidendrum. It was a tatty thing that I got in a raffle. But um, <laughs> it's down here. Uh, that's well over a metre tall now. And it's got other canes pushing on as well, even though they are a bit in the dark. It's got one here that's growing on. Another one down here that's growing on. And the original cane up here had a really bad bit of slug, slug damage halfway up it. And it keeled over. It actually sort of... It couldn't support itself, so it broke off. Um, but this cane is really pushing on. Um, I'm going to keep that long enough to see what the blooms are like. If I can get this... Well, I don't see any reason why this cane shouldn't bloom. It's certainly big enough. But I'm going to keep that just long enough to see what the blooms are like. And they're going to need to be incredibly special for me to keep that plant long term. Um, it's just a clumsy plant. You know, as I say, that, that cane is... It's well over a metre long. It's, it's still growing, it's not finished yet. It's just going to be a tall, lanky plant that will always have to live on the floor. It, it can't go anywhere else, it will touch the roof. You know, so it's just going to be a difficult one to keep. But it was a raffle prize. Um, that's probably where it'll end up again, back in the raffle. <laughs> but whoever gets it next time will be getting a much healthier plant than I brought home, that's for sure. Um, with you know, with some nice canes growing, um, but yeah, I, th I think we'll we'll wait and see if we can get some blooms on it, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so uh, that's a chat about the um, merchandise, the, the the things that you can have. Now, there's no T-shirts on the store at the moment because I'm reluctant, quite honestly, to design them because it's not me that's going to wear them, is it? And it seems pointless putting things up there that you know, people wouldn't be seen dead in or, or don't want to think about getting. So help me out. If you, if you want something, you know, representing my channel, that sort of thing, even if it's only for, for wearing when you water your orchids, if you see what I mean. But, you know, you have to give me some clues on, on what you want. Um, I mean, some of them, somebody might come up with an idea for themselves that lots of other people like as well. So, you know, it's, it's no big deal for me to put the items up there. Um, and you've had your list. You've got the uh, men's short sleeve T-shirts and women's short sleeve T-shirts, round neck ones. Um, there was a V-neck one in there somewhere. The tank tops, the hoodies and sweatshops. Uh, sweatshops, sweatshirts. <laughs> um, yeah, and the, uh, then, well, I gave you the list. So they're all in this video. And there are some long sleeve t-shirts as well if you prefer that sort of thing. I'm one of those daft people. If I have a long sleeve shirt or a long sleeve t-shirt on, the first thing I do is roll the sleeves up. <laughs> it's just me. <laughs> I never wear a shirt with the cuffs done up. And, and even if I put a jacket on and need to roll the sleeves down, I still don't do the cuffs up. I don't like things tight around my wrist. I don't even wear a watch because of that reason. Uh, anyway, I'll see you next time on this dull, miserable day. Sunday morning chat tomorrow about goodness knows what. Um, I've got a feeling what I'm going to do tomorrow, because we haven't done it for a very long time, is just have a look at all the holy clay pots. Uh, they are virtually across the board cat ears. <laughs> um, <coughs> but... We don't look at them closely very often, apart from the couple of project plants that, you know, come up on that sort of update. But, um, yeah, it might be nice to have a closer look at all of them, see what's happening with the roots, new growths, buds, sheaths, all that sort of thing, and see how they've uh, progressed through this year. And, um, yeah, anyway, I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for dropping by.